what have you been up to, Sue Ann? You've been like, you've been annoyingly quiet this whole week. What do you mean? Well, I got, I've like, I'm, I'm momming it, man. <laughs> Heaven, a live golf podcast. I am Sue Ann Hangen. With me, of course, is, as always, is Jerry Fultz, a pain in my butt of a lifetime. Um, and uh, we're both part of the Live Golf broadcast. And uh, if you have seen and watched our coverage, thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. Of course, as always, we have a special guest today, but I will introduce him later on, Jerry. Um, first of all, I see that I know you've been drinking some fake stout. It's a Guinness. It's a Guinness, no alcohol. Day like 49, I think, today is of no alcohol. Not on purpose. For those of you who think I might have turned a leaf, nope. Uh, doctor's orders, but yeah. Um, no, it's actually terrible, but compared to not having anything, it's the best I could do. It's pretty good. You forgot to uh, introduce our producer there, Willie Balls. Well, that you just did. Willie Balls. Yeah, Will, Will Balsam. Balsam is his actual name. Willie Balls is not his real name. <laughs> Um, the amount of texts I've gotten but, uh, from people being like the legend of Willie Balls, so that's probably what people are calling me now. So I, I appreciate it. We have to Soldier's at some point stick. have a we have to have a segment for Willie Balls. We have to like Willie Ball segment. It's like the roast. It's like the roast segment of our show. Where we just yeah, roast it can be like producer. very you know gloves off. We can call it loose balls. <laughs> that's pretty good on the fly, honestly, Jerry. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, and if he disappears, we'll call him Lost Balls. Who knows? I mean, we do have to ask about Ustase and reaching up the rhino's ass looking for a Titleist. No, don't or whatever stop. He was doing. Why are you, like, you're literally, spoiler alert, like, well, you're he, the guy Dean's not even joining every, us like, yet. Yes, but why are you telling the list? You realize we've started the show, right? And you're telling the listeners. It's called a tease. It's called a tease to find out the story. That's not how you tease Oh my goodness. I'm a guy. I don't know how to tease. You're right. That's true. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But the highlight of our show is Ustase and reaching up a rhino's ass. Come on. It could be the highlight, but now you've just ruined the tease. What are you drinking at uh, nine, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Singapore time? Oh, nice. nice. Live Golf Tumblr. Ice cold water. It's a Stanley. I love these things. They're awesome. I need a bigger it's one. It's bigger than you. Yeah. Adult sibling, Jerry, I'd love, to get, I'd love to get your take on the Stanley obsession that the world has right now with these. I don't even know if he knows what a Stanley is. He must I have Come no on. idea. It's a like... it's a brand of I tools t- that I use. <laughs> so you don't know okay, that like you... people are collecting these water bottles like they're uh, rookie baseball cards. So it's a status symbol, Stanley. It's like an igloo or a, or a uh, Yeti. Well, you know, Stan- okay, hang on. So, you know, Stanley is like the one of the like OG when it came, like comes to like camping stuff, right? Like thermos and like. And I stuff thought like it was that a that little thing like- you took for your kids all around the world and took pictures and put them on like mantles and stuff. Wasn't that the little Stanley thing? No. What was that thing called? They still do it. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You're like a different um, generation from Ballsy and I. So, no shit. Like- yeah. Just, just wanted this to is the first I've idea. heard of a Stanley mug, and I couldn't possibly care less that I don't know what it is. Um, anyways, we do have our special guest today, a proud member of Stinger GC, Dean Burmester. <music> Dean, what's up? Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Jupiter, Florida. Yeah, um, thanks for having me, obviously, on the podcast. I don't know how good my quality is. I hope it's okay. Um, it's better than but yeah, Jerry's. good to be here. I'm in Jupe. I'm getting ready for Mexico, man. We uh, we're prepping. Family's back at school, and we're getting going. I'm excited. So you're living there now? You're living in Jupiter? Yeah, we moved here uh, January last year, um, and we're always going to go back to South Africa. But yeah, this is our main base right now. Yeah. How long? How long have you lived there? Uh, since that? January last year. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Did you know you were joining Live when you moved there? No, no, I was. You were a brand new PJ Tour card holder, brand new. You just got it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So I was, um, yeah, I was brand new, obviously, and 
had to make the, the jump because, you know, the schedule was pretty stacked um, then and uh, I wasn't going to see my kids. So it was either, you know, oh, cheers, by the way. Wouldn't be oh. a... It wouldn't be a stingers, <laughs> you know, podcast without a brand what's new in, what, in a stingers glass, you know. What's in that? Alcohol. What's in that? That's brand new Coke. Of course nice. it is. And why, what kind of brand? Oh my god, this this is not fair. This is not <laughs> fair. We need to change this podcast time and make Jerry do it in the morning. I do it at night, and so that I can actually drink. Dean, I'm actually yeah. in Singapore, right? I'm home, so like it's 10 a.m. I. Not that I oh, can't 10 have a drink, but it's 10 oh. a.m. That's nice. Yeah, so you've I'm probably never drank it. Watch. Dean and I have never drank at 10 a.m. I can promise. Never. You. I'm never. Would never have ever. Not once. No, I've, I've can... never. I've never drank at 10. <laughs> 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 so, Dean, the rule back is to, where back I come to... from. As long as you've caught your first fish, you can have a beer. That's it. Simple oh, rule. There you go. <laughs> um, I know you talked a little bit about your family and that being sort of the reason. Was that the main reason why you decided to go and, and move to live? Because I know you worked really hard. You, you, you got, you know, played really well on the Corn Ferry, got that card on the PGA Tour. And then was it mainly your family um, and the schedule that kind of made you jump ships? Or did Louie call you? Like, how did that all happen? Um, yeah, I mean, I can take you through the whole thing. Basically, um, I mean, I, I, was, I was playing a pretty stacked schedule you know, with majors and full DP World Tour season. And then uh, obviously got into Corn Ferry Tour finals um, and then got through there, got like the sixth card there, played pretty nice, which was great. And then all of a sudden I had a stacked PGA Tour season on top of that. So it was like, I'm looking at, you know, 32 to 36 weeks, um, you know, last year. And, um, you know, I said, look, Louis phoned me, this week, actually, this, it's quite funny. This week, the week of the Amex on the Wednesday, and he said, look, um, Brandon and Charles have both told me to give you a call. I'm looking for a fourth. I know you know I'm looking for a fourth. And um, basically, you, you're the guy. So it's yours if you want it. And, you know, take your time, think about it, and, and um, you know, speak to your family, speak to people you trust, and, and see where you're at. And if you have any questions, you know, the the doors always open phone us um and that's pretty much what i did for the for the next three days um and i was still kind of undecided because you know there, there was a lot to weigh up obviously i was brand new to the pga tour um and live was new and exciting and and i'd obviously watched it and i watched you know the stinger's success um and then um it was actually the, i think the friday or the saturday evening of amex i was sitting with my wife mel and we were just chatting and um, yeah, she like basically broke down in tears and said, you know, COVID was like the best time because, you know, I was home for so long and I was able to spend lots of time with, you know, our son, Jordan, and now we had Alex, uh, um, our youngest. And it was kind of like, you know, when, when that moment happened, it was instant because I went from a 34 week schedule to a, you know, 14 to 18 week schedule. So. I mean, it, it was pretty much an easy decision from there to see what it does on the rest of my family, even if, you know, it's great for me chasing my dreams, but to make them travel all over the world and jump from hotel to hotel as well is, is not exactly great. So to give them that stability was, was super cool. Some parts yeah, of that, you so call hard. it an easy decision. Yeah. yeah, you call it an easy decision, Dean. Some parts of that, obviously, for the reasons you stated, were made it easy for you, but you aspired to be a professional golfer your entire life. Then last year at the age of 33, you get your PGA Tour card, the thing everybody in the game of golf, up until now anyway, uh, strive for, wanted desperately, and you got it, and then you gave it back. That's not that easy to do. Uh, no, that wasn't easy to do because, like you said, that's what I had to weigh up. I had to weigh up um, my family's well-being against my dreams. And if you weigh up, I mean, statistically, I'm not really a stats guy. I'm no Bryson, but I, I, statistically, if I weigh up what my odds are to one win a PGA Tour event, two possibly win a major, or I can create, you know, either generational wealth for my family, or just comfort for my family, knowing that my kids could go and study at whatever university they could do if I if I do this thing right. Um, not to say I couldn't have done that on the PGA Tour. It just it's not a guaranteed road. Um, whereas live, you kind of have a little bit more security. 
And um, yeah, that's basically, I mean, that's why I went for it. I mean, it was, it was security. I always explain it to everybody else um, that asked me that question. I, I always say, you know, if, if you were in whatever job, I mean, I don't, if you're chopping wood and you had to chop 200 trees a day to keep your job every day, or someone would say, well, you can, I'll double your pay and you get to only chop a hundred trees a day and you can do that in your sleep, a hundred trees a day, w would you do it? I mean, it's pretty simple. Of course you would do it. I don't think there's any human being with, with kids and a family that, that wouldn't do it. So to me, I mean, and, and there are guys who obviously have turned it down and I, I, I mean, I don't um, hold anything against them for doing that, but I, at the end of the day, not everybody's in the, in the same financial position that other people are. So I did it in the position I was in and I'm so glad because I couldn't be happier, to be honest with you. You know, it's so interesting. I, I always have this converse, conversation with people, you know, who are in the, you know, I play golf with some friends and they always ask me this and I always say, you know, everybody gives all these athletes, I don't care if you're in football, basketball, whether you're in live golf, such a hard time for accepting or, or deciding to make certain decisions that they're making to be paid um, like you said, uh, double or triple whatever the, the money that we're making previously to do less work to, to whether, it's, for example, on us with Live, we played 14 events um, versus whatever you would play on the PGA Tour. And I always say this, isn't that the main goal for most people in life anyway? Like if you're in the corporate world, your goal is to be like the head of your department or a CEO and you want to do less work, you want to be around more, you want to be able to go on a vacation and get paid more. Like it seems like a very natural progression in life to want to have that. And I don't know why everyone's just so critical of, of you guys making that jump and making that decision for yourself, whether that could be a family thing or, you know, whatever your yeah. reason might be. I mean, I think media probably had a lot to do with that. Um, and what, what the PGA Tour stood for for such a long time and still stand for, which is which is great. And and like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But Live is new and exciting. And if you look at the field that, that Live has and has, is going to produce this year, I think, I mean, to get a guy like John Rahm to come across, no matter what the figure is, just, and I can tell you because I've, I've spent a little bit of time with him before he even came over, he's a real family man. He loves his kids. And I know deep down that he's probably thinking, man, I'm going to do something special for my kids and their kids. And I get to spend more time with them and prepare better for the majors. In his mind, I don't think there couldn't have been a better situation for him to, to come over. So, you know, if you, if you look at it from there and, and where everything's heading, who knows? But for us, I don't think there's, there's one member on live that's unhappy. Everybody is super happy. The vibe, you know, the other day when we were doing our media and stuff was just incredible. I mean, everyone was in such a good mood. Everyone, it was like going back to school. It was like seeing everybody again, you know, that first day of school. It was so cool. It was, it was great. Everyone was like, ah, oh, hugging it out. Man, what did you get up to in Christmas and just catching up? And so it is a real family and, and you know, it's, it's just a great place to, to kind of coerce and be involved in and just, you know, ply my trade, which is cool. I think you guys can agree. You're both members there. It's a cool, it's a cool family to be a part of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, minus we, Jerry, uh, but it is pretty cool. We look, we look forward <laughs> to seeing the rest of the crew accept each other. Yeah, like you can't believe. No, it, uh, <laughs> it is kind of. You know what? Speaking of spending time away from the game, so having more time to yourself, which is what Live offers the players. And no matter what you say, the pundits, no matter what you say when asked questions about why and blah blah blah, blah they're all gonna. They all got the their talk. Their the ammo that they've been either told or led to believe to say why oh he said this he said this I don't believe it they did it for only the money they did it for only the money I read a quote on uh, on Facebook or one of those things yesterday as it was that was really inspirational talking about exactly the same sentiment which was if you stay late at work every day for your whole career the only person who's going to remember when your career is over is your kids not your boss. Yeah. So yeah. that has a lot. To, it says a lot. We work forty. We work forty-two days a year. You work more with majors that you play in. We work forty-two days a year for our actual job. You compete forty-two days a year on live. That uh, it it doesn't seem like much, but it's still a absolute full-time job for you guys. Not so much for us, but for you guys. But it it does allow you that time. Uh, everybody that time to 
like feel like you've accomplished something in life and get to enjoy it a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't know if you ever feel that way when you're competing in regular tour golf. Yeah, I, I, look, I, this game can swallow you up, you know, and, and quickly. And if you don't have that time and you just end up playing week after week after week after week, you know, everyone will tell you who's played this game um, that you, you're probably you're one bad shot away from thinking, man, I've got to give up. And you're one, one good round away of thinking, geez, I can win the US Open next week, you know, or whatever it may be. Like, that's, that's where your mind is. And that's how fragile you are within this game. And that's why it's the greatest game on earth. It's just so tough. And it levels you and it, it also lifts you to the highest places possible. Um, but yeah, like you say, you don't get that time to breathe if you just keep going week in, week in, you know, every week. Whereas, like you say, I don't, can't remember the exact days, I think 42 days a year. I mean, if you think about that in the grand scheme of things, yeah, we probably don't play as much on live as we would. I mean, if you compare it to, I don't know, I was on nearly 300, you know, travel days included before yeah. this um wow but it, i mean i mean if you're if you're a top if you're a top ceo or you're a top i mean goodness i i'd like to know what what i, I suppose the top guys never sleep you know they own multiple businesses and are on multiple boards and whatever but i mean when they retire and they're on like sitting on boards and stuff are they working 42 days a year probably the rest oh, yeah, of the time they're on their boats and yachts and planes and fishing and this is what live is. Live is the echelon of the sport. It is the, it's the highest paid place to do what we do. And mm -hmm. there's no, you know, there's, there's no argument about that. And um, that's what it is. You've made it to the top. That's how I feel. I got the opportunity to come and uh, my peers phoned me. Guys I looked up to and, and um, have known for a while have phoned me and said, you're the guy. We want you here and we want you on our team. And, there's no greater feeling than that, you know. And when I when I played Mexico last year, they made me feel so welcome. And other players, you know, on the range, you know, played with Bryson before, um, DJ, Cam Smith, you know, guys walk up to you on the range and say, "Hey, welcome! What a place! You have made it! Like this is the greatest place to play golf." And the commentators and, and made you really welcome too, right? Sorry, the commentator. The commentators made you feel. Oh really yeah, welcome I mean, too, right? I've been yeah. told I'm welcome in the booth anytime. That's all oh, I've been there told. You go. So there you go. I don't, I don't want to hit on <laughs> anybody's jobs when I retire, but you know, I, I, I can, you know, I can talk. I'm easily there. replaceable. <laughs> I was gonna say you're much nicer than Jerry. Um, <laughs> speaking of all hey, this listen, kind of time, and, hey, listen real quick, there, young girl in in, in yellow. Um, <laughs> during Mayakoba last year, Arlo and I were the first to introduce introduce ourselves to this young mm -hmm. man right here. We drove That's around cool. the cart and wanted to meet him and. But primarily for selfish reasons, we didn't know how to pronounce your last name. So, yeah, <laughs> I probably but, said it wrong. I always call, I always say it as Burmester. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It that's is. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's spot on. Right. We drove away, and Arlo was extremely impressed. What a pleasant man! He, what a pleasant guy he is! What a pleasant oh, guy! Oh, all those nice, was, isn't he? Not, and your nickname's <laughs> Mean Dean. I read in a bio somewhere on Wikipedia. That's no mean oh, Dean. He's man. nice Dean. Yeah, I'm like, why Mean Dean? No. Dean, Dean the Machine sounds better. I don't know. They were calling me hmm. Dean the Machine, the kids, over December when I was playing back home. That had a better, better ring to it. I like well, Burmy. Yeah, Burmy's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Dean, now talking about, you know, you, you mentioned a little bit about having more time and all that stuff and being able to, to not be on the road as much. Now, I know you, you, congratulations, by the way, on your back's back win in your hometown of South Africa. Um, we were so happy. We were like, yes, yes. Um, and then obviously that followed up with, you know, Waka winning in Australia and then Louis again back to back in South Africa as well. Um, with that, do you think playing on live has given you more time to now be able to go and support, go home and support more of the South African events that perhaps you might not have had time to do that if you would have stayed on the PGA Tour. Oh, definitely. I'm, I mean, you know, I got to play all three events this year um, in South Africa, which normally I would probably pick and choose two of the three just because I'm burnt out, not because of scheduling reasons, just because I'm totally, I mean, I can't, I can't do, 
if I was playing the DP World season, I would have probably played five events leading into the first event in Cisalabria. So I'm not going to play eight weeks in a row. And I mean, if if I was going from America or wherever else I was playing, I was I'd probably coming in, you know, four weeks, maybe one or two weeks off, then five, and then one week off, and then three or two or whatever to finish the season. Like it's just that time of year is always crazy. But for us and the Australians, it's it's busy because we have those events and we want to support those events because that's where we all started. But I do think that my that was a, a major part of my success this year. Like I was totally relaxed. I've never felt that relaxed playing at home in front of the home crowd. And I was I was ready. My game was was in shape. You know, I might have been rusty, but it, I have enough time in my off season to make sure that you know my technical side of my game is sharp. So then it's just about adjusting to where you are. You know, more than anything else. Um, and that's what Live offers. And that's why I think, you know, Brooks winning the PGA, for instance, he was prepped and he was ready to win that PGA. He had time on his hands. He wasn't, you know, undercooked by any means, but he wasn't overcooked. He just, he was really prepped. And I mean, I saw him play a few times that week and I mean, he was just incredible. And that, that's, that's kind of what it offers, I think. And Louis done the same thing. He wasn't even going to play those events. And then next minute he enters the two events and, and wins both of them. And why is that? Because he feels like, oh, well, I don't want to be sitting at home doing nothing when these guys are all winning. I, I can go and win. I'm, my game's in decent shape. So, and off he went and he proved he could do it. You know, he saw when your we back got to back to back wins uh, and was like, I'm going to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we got to Leopard Creek at the Dunhill and we played a practice round on Wednesday. We played nine holes together, the four of us. And, um, and he said to me quietly on the first tee, we were partners. And he, and he said to me quietly on the first tee, make no mistake, I didn't fly all the way to America just to hand you three in a row. I'm here to beat you. That's what he said That's to me. Awesome. And he goes on and wins. <laughs> so, I mean, that just shows you, like, the, the competitiveness and still the, the nature of the of the game. But it, it was it was super cool for him to, to emulate that. And it was it was so good for, for the family of Liv and, and obviously for the Stingers. It was it was amazing back home. It was I can't tell you how popular it is and and hopefully where it's going for us. Speaking of Louis, all right, speaking of Louis, <laughs> the captain of the Stingers. Yeah. <laughs> in case any of you, just to give you context, okay, the Stingers have a great social media platform. The, the, that page is hilarious. If you want some entertainment from the South Africans, that's where you're going to go. But you boys paid a visit to the Kruger National Park, right? Yeah. Um, to take part in this beautiful dehorning of a rhino to try and save it from being poached. And we're going to touch a little bit more about that in just a second. But what we really want to know, there was a video of Louis Oosthuizen, your captain, with his arm. What the <laughs> fuck was he doing? <laughs> inserted in a rhino's behind. Now, yeah. <laughs> uh, just sorry to our listeners and our viewers for the visuals. If you're just in the middle of having your breakfast, lunch, or dinner, um, apologies. Um, and also, no animals were harmed in this video, okay? But no. Ooh, really, no, though, no, what the weren't. heck was that about, really? What was um, about? Okay, so firstly, I mean, one of us four probably had to do it. Um, I've done it before. Um, and Louis, I mean, Charles and Louis are both uh, cattle farmers now. Louis more so than Charles. Charles is a little newer. But Charles has, you know, grown up with loads of animals. We all beg for Brandon to do it because he's just bought a farm in Nashville. And he's going to experience it one time or another. But you need to take a stool sample of the animal. So you that, that way you can actually um, diagnose what he's been eating, whether it's healthy, uh, where he's going in the park, you, like by the by the plants that he's eating, you can actually determine where he's traveling to. But it is gross, and you got to shove that big glove up your arm. And um, why Louis, can't you take the sample after when it's on the outside of the body? Uh, no, I mean the best time to do it is probably it's just not as much fun because it's not it's not all <laughs> digested yet, so you get everything, I suppose. I mean, look. The funniest thing about that whole thing is Louis chased Brandon for about 50 meters trying to throw it at him, and he missed. So that's, that's the stuff you didn't see on camera. But, but yeah, it, I mean, it, it wasn't pretty, but he, he manned up. I won't lie. He manned up and did it but without a, without a flinch. I just love how your socials team like cut that whole thing. You know, heroes aren't always made on the golf course, and then it cuts to just <laughs> Louis's arm like... 
right up his rhino's behind. Uh, and like yeah. and then he goes, Brendan, shake my hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was that was after he was chasing me. <laughs> it was quite funny. Um, that's oh. awesome. Um yeah, so we were talking about all that visit that you guys did to the Kruger National Park. It is beautiful. It's one of those things that are is on my bucket list to do is to go to South Africa stay on one of those safari resorts and, and really be around those magnificent, magnificent animals. Um, I'm a huge animal lover. I know Jerry is as well. And, and you know, it, it's really sad what's happening in the world and what people do to these animals, um, whether it's poaching or torture or like they're trafficking or all that stuff is just so sad. And I know this is um, in alignment with Live Golf's Potential Unleash that you guys, the Stingers, are committing yourselves to supporting the wildlife conservation in South Africa and around the world and making sure that, that you know, you guys make an impact on, you know, preserving and making sure all these beautiful animals are around for future generations like your, your kids. Um, can you just tell us a bit more about all that stuff and, and, and how did you guys come about making that decision? Because most... What I love is you guys, it's so different from what the other teams are doing in terms of their own CSR, right? I think you're the only team at the moment that's doing it for animals, um, which I love too. Um, obviously, all the other CSRs are great, um, but uh, yours is different. And so tell us about it and um, share with us a little bit about how it came about. Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, I started a, a charity with another golf professional uh, I think we, we're about nine years now, uh, nine years ago, called Birdies for Rhinos. And um, we get golf professionals from all over the world. For every birdie they make in tournament play, they donate a certain amount of money towards the conservation and the fund. And um, that's kind of how it started. And it started with just myself and him. And it's grown to close on 30 professionals on all, all tours all over the world. Um, and then yeah, now, obviously, the Stingers are involved and live is involved and and that's amazing you know for us to kind of um band together and and involve ourselves in that and and have that as a driving force is is super special i always know that you know one you know we go we go for the birdies obviously everybody does all the time but to have that added incentive um at the end of the week knowing that if you've made like 20 something birdies in a week that you you're really helping something and then to go and see it in the bush, I think was super special with the other three guys. You know, it's not something they would have seen before. Um, it's pretty traumatic for the animal at times, but it, it, it is super safe. And it's it's pretty cool to see what what other people and what lengths they're willing to go to to save these animals. And yeah, we uh, look, we've decided, or from my side anyway, we've decided to do animals because, you know, humans can be pretty nasty and pretty disgusting at times and take advantage of you. Whereas these animals don't have a choice. They're uh, they're stuck in the bush and and they um, they're pretty much you know hopeless without people behind them um, you know they'll just they'll just get wiped out and it's not only rhinos it's it's lions it's elephants it's pangolins it's certain bird species fish species whales so it's a it's a broad spectrum we're involved in and with Connected Conservation which is a worldwide company um, it's it's going to be a super cool initiative and it's going to be something hopefully we can do when we visit other countries as well, like Australia and Singapore or Thailand or wherever we may end up going, you know, Hong Kong and, and do fisheries and, and do things like that and, and help help communities and, and help people and, and, you know, help the animals. And in, in, in the whole grand scheme of things, it's, it's going to be special. And hopefully we can grow it into something that will sustain itself for, like you say, many generations and, you know, make sure not only our kids, but their kids and their kids and going forward, we'll be able to see the animals in their natural habitats because that's, you know, that's how it was given to us. And I think that's how we should leave it. Do you, I um, it. I've covered that event with the one you play at Kruger. What's the guy's name who owns it? Uh, Johan Kruger Rupert. National Park. Yeah, Johan Rupert. I covered that remotely from here in Orlando with the Golf Channel when I was with them. Uh, overnight duty watching you guys play. Um, yeah. And, they, and, the, and the producers uh, locally there did so much great visual work with all of the wildlife on that golf course. Do you ever fear for your safety when you're playing that course? Because there, there are some predators around. Uh, yeah, there are a few crocodiles on the golf course. Um, they do have leopards on site. Um, so, yeah, for people who obviously don't know what the leopard is, it's a really big cat that, um, 
hunts really big animals. <laughs> so, yeah, and and you don't see it. I mean, it can be ten yards away from you, and you won't see it. So, but the the good news is is they do have controls. They have a lot of people there that that know where the animals are. They track the animals at all times. Um, they have you know, professional rangers and, and professional hunters and, and people that, that know their stuff, you know, way more than I do. Um, but yeah, they, look, they, the, the, probably the biggest danger there is probably snakes because you can't really control snakes and there are a lot of poisonous snakes in Africa. So yeah, they, they ask you to walk certain paths on the golf course and, and things like that. Um, that time of year that we play when it's hot, the snakes do tend to kind of be out and about and be pretty active. So but yeah, I, I can honestly say this year, I we had one snake uh, in our house that we were staying in there. Um, it was a mm. Eastern African tiger snake, which is kind of mildly venomous, but it was yeah probably a meter and a half long, little little guy. I love how you're just like yeah, just mildly venomous. Mildly venomous. Like well, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was actually um, at Brandon and Louis um, catching up with a few friends and them and my wife. And my mom and the kids and yeah, they 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 found the snake basically in the in the one drawer, curled up like inside the teapot. <laughs> yeah, they were just, they just oh. want to make a cup of tea. So yeah, and then, and then no, but they're great because you, you make a phone call and within two minutes they've got a snake catcher there and they come and catch a snake and they remove it and so you you know you're fine. I mean, honestly, yeah. there, there's no real issues. <laughs> and you, you've got to keep your doors and your windows closed. It's like mosquitoes. Just make sure you, you know, you look after yourself. It's not as scary as it sounds. I promise you. <laughs> I just, I, I oh, just yeah, don't, no, I don't sounds, experience sounds that. Great. I don't experience that stuff here in Singapore. You know, it's a slightly different uh, type of jungle that we experience. It's concrete <laughs> yeah, it's here. Concrete look, this, this year in Tucson, I nearly stood on two rattlesnakes in Tucson. So, I mean, like, I felt like Tucson was more dangerous. The one, I, the one started like shaking its tail. I, I stood like half a half a meter away from the thing, like a yard away from it or whatever. It started shaking its tail. It was right there in the pathway. I know I, a couple of the, the walkways from the the tee box to the fairways, right? I think a, a few yeah, players in the were like, area. yeah, yeah and they were like, like showing on under socials. This thing there, and it, yeah. the guy behind me was actually the guy who who told me about it. The I think it was the the score, the walking score. He like grabbed my shoulder and he said, man, did you see the rattlesnake? I said, no. He's like, turn around. And it's like right there. And I was like, holy shit. Oh, I my like, How's that goodness. That is... When, I was when they rattle, you need to be worried. Me. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah. They won't we strike unless they're in. rattling. <sighs> man, was we, that, we called what? it in. Apparently, they removed it. So that was good. Was that your closest encounter to, to some kind of a, a wild live threat? Um, or have you ha been chased or have you like come really close I mean, to... Yeah, I've, uh, look, growing up in Africa, I've, I've done some pretty stupid things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Please expand. <laughs> yeah, but look, the, the craziest thing I've ever done is um, when I was a kid, we, uh, my brother and I got invited with my dad to like a, a basically a bachelor party, but it was for families. It was kind of subdued. And uh, the guy whose bachelor party it was was obviously having a, a really good time. But he is a, a professional ranger and a former professional cricket player. And um, anyway, we, we're in the riverbed and and um, it's wild and everything's going on. But they have people there. And, and a herd of elephant came down, probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 elephant came down to the river to drink. And um, he said, all right, boys, are you, how brave are you feeling? And I said, oh, I don't know brave enough and uh, he said all right strip down so we both stripped down naked or the three of us and ran across the river which has crocodiles in it by the way ran oh across God. the river and then rolled ourselves in fresh manure like fully fresh head to toe hair face the whole work no and leopard crawled in amongst the elephant and lay there and watched them while they were drinking and playing and eating. So, I mean, I could have got stood on at any time. I mean, who knows? They can't smell you, so they don't know that you're there. So, yeah, it was that was probably the craziest thing I've ever done. It was uh, That was pretty crazy. The second <laughs> I'm, craziest I'm still was here, telling though. us about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. just, I'm like, wait, I mean, I, I'm like I trying to go through the, the whole process. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. And I bet like, your brother, he doesn't do anything low-key, by the way. 
No, my he's brother does open. nothing, Loki. My my brother's pretty wild. Now. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's so he funny. A, oh my he goodness, so he's a funny. special human being. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of I, your I don't want to go, from... Swan. I don't want to go to go. a bachelor party where three guys get naked and roll around and shit. I just don't want to do that. I would love to watch <laughs> you get rolled up in shit. That would be just uh, like the best thing to watch. I would, I just, uh, I wouldn't even know how much I would pay for you to do that. Oh, uh, the greatest line from a movie called Carbon Copy. I think it was Denzel Washington's first movie with George Segal was, I'll work in it, I'll live in it, I'll smell it, but the last thing I'm going to do is take it. I won't take it. I won't take shit. No one, so, no one yeah. takes shit. That's it. No one takes That's shit. That's right. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I like that. Um, I know you talked about your friend um, who did that silly thing with you about putting shit all over your body and all that stuff. He was an ex, ex pro cricketer. Now, from one ex pro cricketer to another, your father, Mark, he yeah. played uh, for Zimbabwe, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and yeah. Uh, and your your mom, as of 2022, holds the women's course record at. Correct me if I'm saying this wrong. Royal Harari? Harari. Harari. Yeah. Harari. Okay, Harari, there yeah. you go. All right. It's yeah, confident. Royal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of one of many um one of many my mom holds, but that one's pretty famous because it's it's held a lot of like uh, professional tournaments and stuff, including ladies tournaments and my mom still holds the record, so Well, what's the why. score? Uh I think it's 3 under par. Okay. So, yeah, nice. it's it's um like the golf course for the ladies is pretty tough. It's it's kind of an old golf course that's short. So for the men and today's golf, it's really short. Um, but for the ladies, they they're not that far forward, and they never really were. So my mom was lucky enough to hit it quite far. And yeah, she's. I think they've only ever been. I I could be wrong, but I think they've only ever been six scores of under par around there by a lady. No so, way! Wow. Yeah, wow. it's it's pretty cool. And I think my mom's got a few of those six. Um, yeah, she's she was she was a special goal. She still is. She just never plays anymore. I don't know why she she doesn't really feel like playing. But um, but yeah, she's still. I mean, every time I go out with her, she's she tells me she's an eight. So I'm giving her like 14 shots, and then she shoots like level par or something. It's stupid. <laughs> was um, that how you got into golf? Was that um, you know? Yeah, my whole my whole family. Um, my grandfather. Um, and then, well, on both sides, my mom's parents and then my grandfather on my dad's side. And then, yeah, my mom and dad basically, you know, they used to play every Wednesday, every Saturday. And um, on a Saturday, I used to just, you know, get dropped off and got given a caddy in Zimbabwe. And off you went, you know, 36 holes or go hit balls on the range. And he would, the caddy would pick up balls for you or you know, chip and putt and putt under the, there used to be one spotlight at the course where I grew up and we used to putt under that thing for, I mean, days, it felt like days and never get bored. So yeah, that's, that's how I grew up. I mean, it's, it's a, probably a, a really typical golf story. And then, yeah, I, when, when I got older, I, I kind of stopped doing that and focused more on cricket because my dad was my hero and I wanted to be like my dad and like every boy, you know, and, um, then I realized I'm, I'm probably not good enough at that. So went back to golf and started practicing a bit more and winning a few tournaments and thought, geez, maybe I'm good enough at this. And then it turned into this whole thing. So it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, yeah, I was a little more of a late bloomer than other guys or in today's day. I mean, parents are 14 what kids too. What are you too. late bloomer? You're, you're 34, 34. Yeah. 34 now. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a child compared to Jerry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, you, could, you, could, you could be your dad. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I think I'm older than dad Dean's and dad. Your brother. I had beers no with his way. dad. I don't remember. Where, yeah, I think it was, where was it? New uh, Jersey, New Denver? Jersey. Denver? We we New all Jersey, had yeah. a couple of drinks. Yeah, yeah I think, Jersey. I, yeah, maybe. I think I might be older than your dad, which is kind of sad, but that's okay. Um, oh, speaking I mean, of do we uh, put this getting into golf, do we want to put this out? I'm 61. How old's your dad? No, you're older than my dad. That's all I'm going to say, Jerry. Oh, fuck me. Jesus. Oh, he was no. really young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. For that's sake. awesome. My dad's about to turn 56. Yeah, told you. Told you. Wow, no Yeah, he was, way. He, he was super young, huh? Him and my mom were so young. 
crazy. Yeah, wow. and it's not like it's not like he's lived a whole lot less uh, uh, liver abuse than I have either, and he looks great. He, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, he's so not gonna be playing cricket of, anytime soon, but he looks good. No, that's true. That's true. I was watching cricket last night, actually, the uh, 2020 from uh, at, from. Um, from uh, from Auckland, believe it or not, I don't I don't even know who the teams were, but it was on TV here, and I was watching it on one of our sports channels. Um, speaking of uh, golf, getting back to it a little bit, you were the I mean, you were the recruit that all three guys wanted on the team, but you were the A player this year, 14th on the money list, points list. Um, never had a tournament where you didn't count at least twice. The only guy on your team who can say that two podium finishes, I believe, the only guy on the team with that. Uh, what are you going to do to kick your team? And you had the, your captain, who played great at the end of the year because he was well rested. Was I think he was amongst the lowest captains of the league in terms of where he finished. How are you going to kick your team into gear? You got to. I mean, how are you going to do this? You can't do it all by yourself. I mean, look, I'm not. I think, to be honest with you, this year the other three guys really struggled with um, injuries. You know, Louis has no tendons left in his elbow. Charles has no shoulder pretty much left i mean he's got so many tears in his labrum and his shoulder but he seems to be back he's been gymming hard and and doing the right stuff and Charles seems better and louis says now that they he thinks the last tendon is kind of off he has no more pain so that's you know the back end of the season he started to play a little bit better that's probably why and then brandon's had a couple of wrist things and that's all been sorted so if we i mean if we manage to stay injury free or niggle free what i would call niggle free I think we're gonna we're gonna contend because I mean let let's be honest, Louis and Charles probably have two of the greatest golf swings you'll ever see, um, and then you combine that with Louis's putting stroke. I mean, something special. And then Charles' iron play is ridiculous. And then Brandon's probably the best mentality I've ever seen, like on a golf course, hands down, off a golf course, a little, little, little bit crazy but he, it's a good crazy it's so fun to be around but he's on a golf course he's just incredible he never gives up he's like a jack russell who's bit you in the keep his heel he's just not gonna let go and that's why i mean that's such a talent um so yeah i think i think they'll be back i don't have to do anything i just gotta do my thing and make sure that they don't drink too much brandy and then we'll be fine <laughs> now uh, or, you know speaking of your or team more I brandy think... i don't know we'll or... go one way or the other <laughs> let's let's try more. Let's see what happens. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now on one of your socials, uh, your posts. I love watching you guys on your social media and you as well. I think you're probably the more active one out of all your teammates on your own personal page. Um, but you mentioned that the team win in Tulsa uh, last season was a particular highlight for you in 2023 uh, when you did yeah. your 2023 wrap up video. How so? So, I mean, the team win kind of just solidified my place. I think it was one winning was super special. I wanted to get that done for myself personally, obviously individually, but for the team more importantly, because it just helped me f feel like I belonged with the other three guys because they had won, they had won already as a team and then you know, with, with Henny, and Henny's a great player in his own right, but I was the new guy, I was the guy, so, you know, in Tulsa, Brandon obviously had the, that last putt on the last hole, but I made a 12-footer a downhill right to left on my last hole for us to pip the four aces, and I felt like, you know, playing with Louis that day as well, and then doing that on my final hole, you know, and, and shooting a bogey-free six under and helping the team like that was super special, I mean, I, I, all I wanted to do was get on stage and spray the other three guys in the face with champagne. I just couldn't think of any better way to kind of cap that off and uh, get rid of all that stress. And I and I managed to do that, so it was cool. That was that was probably a bigger highlight than actually the twelve foot. It was probably spraying them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, they invented the champagne spray. They won the very first event uh, in That's London right. last year, and so did mm -hmm. so did Charles and uh, Caddies and them up on the podium for the first time. We didn't know what we what we were watching and it turned out to be an awesome tradition you guys got really good at spraying uh you were you were your 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 form if i remember right your form was pretty good in terms of champagne spraying <laughs> but uh well i mean brandon brandon they when he won in uh the second event in portland last year he, he you could have sprayed him with a tanker full of champagne he was just going to sit there and take it and smile the whole time 
Loved watching yeah. that. I mean, yeah. it's life changing, isn't it? I mean that that kind of win and you know that what it means and what it means all around. You know, not only you know financially, but actually just meaning that I'm here and I can do this against some of the best players in the world is super special. That gratifying feeling, you don't get a better feeling than that being in a professional golfer or an athlete. So I can totally get that and hopefully I can get a moment like that or just give myself a chance to get a moment like that this year. And, and um, man, if they don't tackle me and spray me with champagne, I'll be very disappointed. No, well, <laughs> I'll do the, I'll, if, if no one does, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll promise, I'll strip down into my underwear and jump in a lake. If there's uh, not again. I can say that on the podcast. Yeah, you did that in your practice round. It's, yeah, this is yeah, this is taped. This is taped, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold me to that. I'll make sure I'm wearing good underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I live out in the country, and we have a lot of cattle right in the, right behind my house here. We can roll you around in the manure there too, just just for you know, just to recreate <laughs> that fine. crazy game. night and. Uh, just I'm for shits and giggles, no pun intended. I tell you what, I'll, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, watched, I've been watching Yellowstone. I'll be inspired to jump bareback on a cattle and on a cow and hold it by the neck and see if I can. I don't even know. Become a rodeo guy. That sounds like my next Perfect. career move. Speaking of your team and, and just even hearing you talk about the dynamics between all of you, you know, uh, Jerry and myself were, were very privileged to be able to be around uh, all of our players on Live, and I think. Uh, between all the teams, I think the Stinger boys and the Ripper boys, you guys really, truly do not take yourself very seriously. And you have this, um, you know, I mean, your slogan is, is grin and grind, right? Yeah. And, and it's certain you got, you guys certainly live to, to those words. And it's, um, it's so awesome to watch that chemistry happen. Now, how does, does it, that come very naturally because of the South African culture or is that like because you guys knew each other for a long time or did it just very, happen very organically? Um, I think a lot of that has to go down to to probably Louis and his personality. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm super serious, but I can be very hard on myself. I think Charles is the same and Brandon... You know, like I've mentioned before, is great. But Louis' personality is really, he knows how to, you know, take them, I mean, take the piss out of you when you're feeling the most down and make you laugh. Yeah. So he gets that He gets that frustration or whatever it is out of you quickly. And, I mean, there's no better way than describing this than last year when Shaw broke his toe. And then, you know, we got to Bedminster and we got on the range the next week and he had it play soccer ball for him to kick and a steel toe shoe and you know don't break your toe you idiot like kick this thing and use the shoe like we need you like don't do you know so then it's all done and what happened Shaw went and had a good week at Bedminster didn't he He played well so yeah. isn't that I mean isn't that funny and that's testament to him as a person and and how he is like he's so jovial and and he's he is the number one prankster for sure he I mean he gets us all the time and that's there's no better feeling than not wearing that big hat and louis coming up with that is amazing because we just get to take the pits out of everybody else the whole time and um yeah looking for a coach is a, is a great slogan because i think uh, i think it's needed <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's awesome. The dunce cap. We we love the dunce cap. We call it the dunce cap. I don't know where that came from, but an old saying. Yeah. Um, love that. Love you guys lead in strokes gain smiling. Brandon Grace hasn't stopped smiling since he joined Live uh, last uh, June a year ago. Uh, it seems like every time we see you guys, nobody's ever in a bad mood. So, just want to say thanks for. Uh, I know Suan will say goodbye to you formally. I want to say hey, good luck. Can't wait to see you in Mexico, and good luck the rest of the year. And uh, go Stingers. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Jerry. Appreciate I'm, that. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited to, to see you guys again and, and see what pranks are up Louis' uh, sleeves this season. I hope you're on that list. Uh, also no, looking forward to uh, watching you jump into some kind of a lake or a pond, hopefully a really dirty one, in your underwear. Um, but we really look forward to, to watching you do that at some point this season. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you in, what, a couple of weeks? I think yeah, a couple today. weeks ago. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And safe travels there. And uh, can't wait to catch up over a beer.
Same to you. Uh, well, that was awesome. Uh, I love that guy, man. He's just so funny. He's so honest. And, you know, I think the highlight for me, I think, was just having manure just completely coated. And that, that whole story is just so, you don't hear that. Not in my neck of the woods, anyway. Um, you know, we don't experience that kind of stuff here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he's such a superstar, and, and I, I'm gonna call it. I think he's gonna win this season. The way he's been playing, yeah, that'd be cool. He's yeah. de definitely, yeah, he's got the talent. Yeah, absolutely has the talent. No doubting that. Um, but you know, my overall take was just the, the South African team that you hinted at toward the end. There's so much fun to be around. Every one of them is so much fun to be around. The Australian team, Ripper GC, they are to a man a blast to be around. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I, and it's very similar cultures, very similar self-deprecating cultures. But to get here and, you know, I don't know how many people listen to this or watch this or what have you, but to let them know that you <laughs> stripped down with two buddies on a bachelorette party, including your brother, ran across a river with crocodiles in it, rolled around in shit, and then stood <laughs> under the elephant so you can watch them as, as something that looked like fun? Are you, and, when I went to bachelor party, this is a whole different kind of shit we got into. <laughs> And like, I'm hoping that doesn't happen at my bachelor party this weekend. I'm oh, really no, no, no. Now you, <laughs> oh, that's this weekend. Now you have to, now you, now yeah. that needs to be on your list of things to do. I don't know why you would find that in New York. Well, you're going to Arizona, aren't you? So, um, yeah, yeah, they, they have elephants and crocodiles. Yeah, no. Um, uh, well, they got pl plenty of cougars. <laughs> nice. But I just, low hanging fruit. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> he's got some, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that was a cheap shot from the cheap seats. <laughs> Ouch. Um, anyway, Ouch. anyway, that was so I've much fun. I've lost twice tonight now. You've lost, yes. I, and I'm yeah. not even drinking, dude. Yeah. I'm not even drinking. Um, anyways, that is a wrap for us here uh, on Fairway to Heaven. Thank you so much for joining us. Do subscribe and uh, leave us a comment and you can find us wherever you find your podcast. And should you like to watch this video, that is available for your pleasure or pain, depending on how you receive this podcast. <laughs> um, you can get it on our Live Golf YouTube page as well as our Live Golf Plus. Uh, plus? Wow, plus. 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 Uh, which is our streaming app. So um, we've got another great guest lined up for next week. So do join us then. In the meantime, Jerry, stay out of trouble. Be nice. Try and not be an asshole. And um, I'll see you then. <laughs>